Hey, you guys. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you so much for tuning into Carol's Daily Sauce. Yes, yes, yes. We got some good stuff today. Um, we are um, going to be discussing the 19th day of Taming Our Tongue. So, y'all, forgive me. Y'all know I do this all the time, so forgive me. Okay, so anyway, please like, comment, and subscribe to be reminded of each and every video that I upload. Make sure that you click on that bell. We are on a tongue fast, 30 days to Taming Your Tongue. This is a book written by Deborah Smith Pagoos, and we have been on this tongue fast. Those of you who have joined on this journey, let me get up real close so that you can see it. Um, it has been such a blessing. I know person for my life. So we are actually on the, this hair y'all, <laughs> we're actually on the 19th day. And, um, this particular day, we are discussing the rude tongue. Um, I know for a fact that there are very, very few people that like to deal with the rude tongue. I know I don't. Um, please share it out to your family and frenemies. Continue to pray for them um, as we go ahead and discuss our 19th day of taming our tongues, okay? Okay, so what I always do is I show you the book and then I start with the scripture because every one of the chapters um, that start, the writer does uh, begin with the scripture. We know that I am no younger, no longer a young fish, so I have to, or a young woman or however you want to call it, and so I do have to wear my glasses. Uh, the scripture reference uh, that is uh, referenced here comes out of the Message Bible. It's Isaiah chapter 35, verse 8, and it says, There will be a highway called the Holy Road. Now, that's not the scripture. That's just what the author has put in. There will be a highway called the Holy Road. But the scripture is, No one rude or rebellious is permitted on this road. It's God's people exclusively. Supposedly this, I'm reaching for my Bible, y'all, because I need to check this out. Uh, this road right here, this uh, road such as, uh, that is a reference to Holy Road, uh, you have to be right. You're going to have to have a good heart and you're going to have to be able to uh, literally tame those tongues. So what I'm doing is I'm actually looking in the King James Version. We are looking at chapter 35 and verse 8 because that particular reference um, in the book is out of a message Bible. Like I always tell you guys, sometimes it could be out of the King James Version. Other times it could be message Bible. Other times it could be the NIV, which is a new English version. But I want to read it out of the King James Version. This is Isaiah chapter 35 and verse 8 and what it says and an highway shall there be and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness the unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for those the wayfaring men the fools shall not err therein so basically they just put it in our regular language basically just like it said there's a highway called the holy road but no rude or rebellious tongue will be permitted on this road so all right let's talk about this rude tongue okay speaking of the highway or the holy road wouldn't it be wonderful if there really was a highway where one could travel and interact with only nice um, and considerate people, wouldn't it be nice if you woke up every single day and everybody that you interacted with was kind and nice to you? Everybody. Everybody um, in the drive through line, everybody uh, on the highways and the byways, in passing, everybody in the store, everybody that you interacted with. Wouldn't it be kind? Wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody was nice and considerate? Yeah, I, I know I would enjoy it. Um, where 
there wouldn't be rude drivers yelling obscenities and things to their fellow drivers daily. Instead, people would just drive, you know? They'd wait um, for people to go when the light turns green. I absolutely positively cannot stand for someone in the back of me to honk because you never know what is going on um, with the person that's in front of you. That person, God forbid, could be having a medical emergency. We don't know. So we have to be patient. What has made us so rude? What has made us so rude? Do we work too much? Are we not getting enough sleep? Does our community cause us to blurt out obscenities to all those we encounter? I mean, is, is, is the world so bad that we can't even be kind to one another? I know y'all sick of me always adjusting this camera. I mean, is it spoiled children? Are our bosses demanding too much? Are we having um, unbearable deadlines placed on us at work? What is causing us to be so rude? Why do we want to always continually operate in that of a rude time? Well, let's see. Are we just stressed out in our daily living? Maybe it's just a lack of patience. Maybe it's just a lack of patience due to modern uh, conveniences. We live in a popcorn mentality. Everything is instant, quick, and done at the blink of an eye. Now, if you guys are my age or older, you guys will remain will will uh, will remember Sabrina, the um, the magic genie, and that was a show um, that used to come on. It was a um, it was a sitcom that used to come on. And Sabrina, the genie, used to always do her head like that. And every time she did her head like that, whatever it was that she wanted done came into fruition. She was a genie. She was able to do, you know, things like, at, you know, whenever she went and snapped her hand, it got done. And we live in a society now. No, the society is not full with, filled with genies because we know genies are not real. They're really not in existence. But we do live in a society where everything is instant. We got instant noodles. We got microwave popcorn. We have um, instant mentality of instant facelifts. They have facelifts where you actually can go to the doctor and on your lunch, 45 minutes to an hour, you can have an instant facelift. Everything we do is instant. You can go to um, um, the grocery store and even though... Uh, um, this is an instant. It's a good example. You have uh, lines at Walmart, okay? You've got 10 lines at Walmart, depending on how busy the Walmart is, and there are literally um, cashiers in each one of those 10 lines, but 11, 12, and 13 are lines in which you can actually ring up the groceries yourself. Now, you know what, you guys? I do. I have got to tell you guys, I do ring up my groceries, not for any other reason other than I just like doing it. Um, I found a lot of mistakes whenever I go through the line. Sometimes I get charged two and three times for things. And then I have to go back to Walmart and try to get a refund. And sometimes that doesn't always work out because they don't always believe you. I mean, Everything, everything is instant. Everything is fast. Everything in the world today, all of the modern conveniences are popcorn mentality. Everything happens fast. The one thing that I know and the one thing that the reader put in the Rutung chapter is those who show patience are rare occurrence. We don't see people that practice patience on a daily basis. Heck, we might be lucky if we run into one or two a week. Ill-mannered, discourteous communication has become a standard practice. And unfortunately, this is something that is continuing to happen even amongst Christians. So the writer writes that while in a meeting with fellow employees, 
um, there was a gentleman who was also in the meeting. He asked a question and he continued in a way, in his usual manner of talking very, very slow. Well, there was a frustrated woman, a frustrated coworker. She was frustrated with his pace and she obviously was anxious about her next meeting that she had to attend. Y'all know what she did? She lacked grace. She lacked in grace to hold her thoughts until he finished. She abruptly interrupted the man, finished his st his sentence or his statement, and completely changed the subject. So that's like, I'm talking, and then somebody says, well, anyway, such and such and such. People are just impatient, and then goes to something else. Rude. There's no re reason for people ever to be rude like that. Everyone that was in the meeting was uncomfortable. They could tell by the looks on the faces that everyone was uncomfortable. Yet no one, not one single person said anything to that woman in that meeting. And that meeting was a meeting full of executives. But in addition to that, that was a meeting at a Christian organization. Now, what should have happened is she should have been reprimanded because you can't, even though you have another meeting that you have to attend, you can't be rude to people. You still have to respect people and respect people's feelings and respect the fact that everybody doesn't talk fast, just like you, like me. I don't talk fast, okay? And I'm not going to talk fast um, because someone is impatient, that's crazy. Being rude to others is very, very degrading, and it can spoil a person's entire day. There's a golden rule, okay? And the golden rule that we as Christians should go by comes out of Luke chapter 6, verse 31, and it reads, Do unto others that you would have them do unto you, okay? That's just the golden rule. It doesn't mean if you're rude to me, I'm going to be back rude to you. It means if I'm kind and nice towards you, the hope is that you would be the same towards me. Now, that does not always happen. However, you get personal gratification by knowing that you handled, excuse me, a situation in a way that was pleasing in the eyesight of God. We as human beings are totally absorbed and consumed with our own agendas. Everything we do, everything we say has to do directly with us. We don't see to the right, nor do we see to the left or the other way, right or to the left about anybody else's concerns, anybody else's um, situations, because many of us, many of us um, are so concerned and consumed with only that that concerns us. How many of you guys can think of a time where you were anywhere, whether it was a grocery store, um, wherever it was, and you heard somebody loudly speaking on their cell phone as if no one else was present? Yeah, girl, such and such and such and such. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And loud. You know what? Not only did I hear someone talking on the cell phone all loud. Y'all, what got me is a person was, um, they had the earphones, you know, I guess it was the earpieces, and they were uh, cordless, wireless, hands-free, and they were talking so loud. I was in, it was it was when I was uh, living in Fairfield, and they were talking so loud. Let me tell you guys something. The conversation was so disruptive, not because of what they were saying, because I didn't concern myself with what they were saying. It was the manner in which they were doing it as far as being loud and belligerent. You don't have to let everybody hear your conversation. That's rude. And I don't think the other person on the other line would want you allowing everybody to hear the conversation that you and him are having, him, he or she are having. Cell phone users are totally offensive to most of the people uh, that are around them. Um, they can be annoying, they can be offensive, and they can use uh, offensive social misconduct, like loud talking or uh, uh, just, if you're having a conversation with somebody, keep it on a monotone in which um, it is a conversation between you and the person on the phone. You don't need to be loud talking. 
Because trust me, hunty, there are some hustlers. There are some ear hustlers. There are some people that are eavesdropping, trying to see what it is that you are discussing. If you want that situation to be a private conversation between you and the other person on the phone, the best thing that you would do for yourself is to keep your conversation at a monotone that you can hear and the person on the other uh, side of the line can hear. Even though cell phone users speak quietly, how rudely it is of us to speak on the cell phone when we are out dining with others, dining with others, out having dinner with others. And oftentimes we spend an inordinate amount of time on the cell phone. I actually love my older sister. I love her. She's amazing. My older sister is amazing, amazing, amazing. But that is the one thing that I dislike about my older sister. Me and my older sister can be going to the grocery store. And if someone calls her on the phone, instead of her saying, now mind you, she lives in Georgia and I live in California. So our time is often limited. So instead of saying, I'll talk to you when I get to work tomorrow, um, can I call you back a little later? She will be in a conversation with me, stop the conversation with me when the person calls and carry on a conversation with the person as if I'm not even in the car. Rude, straight up rude. If you're in a conversation with someone else, if it's not something that's emergent, just let the person call back. And the way that you can always tell whether or not a conversation is emergent if someone calls you when you are in a conversation with someone else, whether it be verbally or on the phone, and but I would I'm, I'm pretty much speaking in person verbally. Um, if they hang up and they don't call back right away, nine times out of ten, it's not important. Most of the time, when conversations or calls are very important or urgent of an urgent nature, the person will call immediately right back. It's a wonder why relationships all over are so shallow. Relationships with mothers and their children, relationships with husbands and wives, because everybody is rude. Everybody is rude. We're not giving our undivided attention to the people that we are communicating with, and we're just making life miserable. What about the cashiers that you go into the stores and here you are with a basket full of $200, $300 worth of groceries and the cashier in lane seven is having a long drawn out conversation with the cashier in number eight. I mean, they are absolutely engrossed in their talking to one another that they don't even have time to speak to you. And guess what? You're the customer. They are ringing up stuff. They're making mistakes. They're doing this and that, but nobody has acknowledged you. And you're the reason that they're actually getting paid. I'm going to tell you what I do when they do that to me. I always, always, always go. So how are you today? Sure do. I sure do. I don't think that's rude because if I come into a store and I am making a purchase, okay? It is your responsibility as an employee of that establishment to greet me because I'm spending my money. Let me get something to drink, y'all. My throat is scratchy. I got a drink at, um, what is it called? Taco Bell. Y'all love watermelon. But for some unknown crazy reason, I decided that it would be absolutely cute for me to get watermelon seeds in my watermelon slushy drink. So if you hear me crunching, sorry for being rude. It's really not my intention. Kids will like that. I don't know why I got them seeds. Because that is not even, I mean, it's, it tastes like uh, sugary chalk. Anyway, I always, 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 whenever I'm in Walmart or anywhere and people are ignoring me and they're ringing up me, they're ringing me up and taking my money, I always say, so how are you today? Mm -hmm. It's rude for you to not speak to someone when you are ringing them up. Or think about the executive that you work with or the coworker that you work um, that you uh, work with who has their cell phone and they're texting while the meeting is going on. Or if the meeting um, 
while the meeting is going on, they go, hello? Yeah, I'm in a meeting. Uh-huh, I'll call you back when I get out the meeting. That is so rude, that's disruptive, and it's also disrespectful. And if I were the one who was heading that meeting, I'm sorry, they would get straight up written up because you don't do that. That's rude, 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 rude. I do not understand rude people or rude tongues. It's ridiculous. It doesn't look, you can be as beautiful as I don't know what, but if you are physically beautiful, but if that mouth is rude and nasty all the time, mm -mm, mm -mm, not a good idea. Shouldn't our love be for Christ um, to where we, re we represent him in such a way um, with courteous and good behaviors? Shouldn't it be like that? Don't you think that when you are courteous and, and, and kind to other people, um, don't you think that that is nice in the eyesight of God? The scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 and 5, that love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. boast. Love isn't rude. And love does not demand its own way. Be kind. It's so, you know what? Honestly, you guys, I feel so much better when I'm kind. I'm telling you, I get personal gratification out of being kind. I don't understand people who are grouchy. I don't understand people who always want to chop your head off for whatever reason. I don't understand. I understand we have good and bad days. I do understand that. But there are absolutely some people that are rude every time, 365 days out of the year. They are just rude. They're just rude for no reason. Disgusting in my book. What if somebody is rude to you? Should you repay them with the same behavior? According to the scripture, we should not, okay? The Bible does say do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But you know the offensive nature that we take on when someone is being rude. I was going to share with you all um, a story actually that went on, but I read further on in the book and I'm going to tell you it then because I think that it would be better served at that part of the um, of the uh, chapter. While God doesn't de um, deserve, de I'm sorry, while God does not desire us to be wimpy, he doesn't desire us to be scared, he doesn't desire for us to grin and bear uh, rudeness from others, we must confront rudeness in a direct manner. He, God doesn't want us wimpy, he doesn't want us you know, letting people walk all over us. He wants us to be strong. He wants us to be able to stand up for ourselves, but he wants us to do that in a manner that is non-offensive. We don't have to be ugly all the time. You just don't. It is never, never, never necessary to be rude, period. Um. It may, be necessary, it may be necessary to tell someone you are so very rude. It may be because some people may not know that they're being that way. Some people may be so caught up in their own way that they don't even know that they're being rude. Now, quite naturally, if you tell someone that they are being rude, they are going to take offense. That, that just goes without saying. But there is a way in which you can tell someone um, of their rude and uh, their rude and dis disrespectful nature, with kindness and graciousness. There's definitely a way. You can inform them that you are aware of their lack of graciousness, and maybe you can say, um, "Had a rough day, huh? Had a tough day." Is there something I can do that might be able to help you get through the rest of your day? Some people are rude because. They continue to get right away with it. They've been rude to Sally. They've been rude to Joe. They've been rude to, to Nancy. And they continue to get away with it. So they just want to be rude to everybody. Don't let people continue to be rude to you, especially when you are in a working environment, especially if, we, if you are at work. If you are at work and you are dealing with someone who is rude, 
unruly, disrespectful, it may be necessary. It may be necessary to tell someone who has more authority. Um, it may be necessary to report their rudeness to someone who can um, reprimand them and uh, let them know that if they want to keep their job, that they need to be and behave and act in a kinder manner. More importantly, don't allow people to suck uh, you into their vacuum of rudeness. There it is right there. Don't allow people to suck you in their vacuum of rudeness. Now, here is the story that I wanted to tell you guys. I may have told the story in the beginning of the study. This happened maybe about two and a half months ago. I've said this on more than one occasion. I pride myself on being a very kind person, say kind things, and I say them honestly, genuinely from the heart. If I don't feel it, I'm not gonna say it. Because to me, saying something just because it's something that you think that a person might wanna hear is none other than a lie. That's just my opinion. Um, it's better for you not to say anything than to lie and say something. It, 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 that's just how it is. So what happened to me on this particular day, my husband and I were going into the store to get something. We were going into Walmart. Yes, y'all, Walmart is my store. And um, as we were going, um, there was a car that was turning into, attempting to turn into a parking space, okay? They were attempting to make a left. So my husband and I, we're walking and my husband always tells me that as his wife he does not want me to walk on the outside my husband is always on the outside i'm always on the inside well this particular time the guy was waiting for the people to come out so that he could turn in and go into the store obviously the persons that he was waiting to come out of the parking space was taking too long so what he was doing was run 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 revving up his car pretty much rushing them, rude, okay, straight up rude. So um, what I did, when my husband heard that, my husband said, go ahead and come over here on this side with me. And I said, nope, I'm going on the other, I'm going this way. I said, he's just gonna have to wait. He gotta wait for them to come out. He needs to just wait while I go and I uh, walk past. I want you guys to know that when I walked past, it, it just happened like this, you know? The person was coming out, he was pulling in, and he almost hit me. He did. Now, first and foremost, I should have listened to my husband when my husband told me to come on this side because had I listened to my husband when my husband told me to come on this side, I wouldn't even be having this conversation with you guys today as to what happened. The man almost hit me, um, and I was livid. Livid, Okay. I literally waited until he got out of that car, okay? Waited. Mind you, he was going in Walmart. I had already been in there. And let me tell you, I called that man everything but a child of God. Everything. Stuff came out of me that I didn't even know was up in me. I didn't even know that I could cuss like that. I didn't even know that I had that much anger. I had no idea. So that let me know, you know what, girl, you are really human. You are really human. But I thank God that I'm able to see what is still in me so I can continue to pray that God would continue to clean that crud out of me. Because none of us are perfect. But to make a very long story short, I waited. I didn't even get in my car, okay? I didn't even get in my car until he passed by. And when he passed by, I asked my husband, is that him? He had the nerve to say, yes, it was. And when he said, yes, it was, I went in. And I told him, don't you ever, you blooty, 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 bloot. I'll bust your head to the white knee. I'll do this, I'll do that. And da 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 Little kids walking around with their parents talking about, mama, what is the white meat? Why is that lady so upset at that man? She's calling him everything. I mean, y'all, embarrassing. I showed my whole entire tale that night. So 
Um, I just want you guys to understand why I did that. Why I told you that. Why I told it, that story. Because I am a born-again Christian, there's this thing called conviction. I want you guys to know I couldn't sleep that night. I would fall asleep and wake up and I would see pictures. I would see images of that man in my face as I slept. And I believe what God was trying to tell me was that was his child. That was his child too. I don't know what that man was going through. I don't know what that man had been through. That man could have lost his wife. That man could have lost his child. Anything could have went on. Who's to say that because of the way that I reacted, he didn't go and kill himself? I, I don't know. I'm not saying because of what I said, but I mean, I don't know. We never know what people are going through. And because you never know what people are going through, you need to be very, very careful about what it is that you say. We are supposed to speak kind words, sweet as a honeycomb. A lot of times people will try your patience, try your patience and try your patience. They will use the rudest tongues that they could possibly use to set you on fire, just like it happened with that guy. It was one of those, your wish is my command, because he got it. Am I proud of it? No, Lord. I hope never to be in a situation again, but I can t like that again, but I can tell you this much, it was a learning experience for me. And if I'm ever in another situation like that, guess what I'll do? I won't say nothing to him. Well, my husband tell me to go on the other side, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go on the other side. Remember, you can always inform someone of their lack of graciousness in a very, very kind way. What we have to understand is as Christians, people are watching. They're watching every day. They're watching every move you make. Your neighbors are watching excuse me, your family members are watching, your children are watching. And the sad thing about your children is that your children are watching and repeating everything that it is that you do. So we don't have to allow people to treat us a certain kind of way, but never allow someone to suck you into their vacuum cleaner of rudeness. It's just absolutely positively not worth it. Remember, there is never, ever, ever, ever justification for being rude. Understand me. Please understand me. Now, it is okay for you to get your point across. It is. God does not desire for us to allow people to walk all over us. He doesn't desire for us to be wimpy and not be strong and not tell people how we feel. He does not desire that. However, he does not desire us to be rude. So if you find yourself being a rude person, always being rude, always lashing people with that old rude, nasty, and mean tongue, repent and recommit to God that you are going to follow the golden rule. And what was the golden rule? Be kind to others. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Admit to yourself that you've been rude and that, yes, you made an ungodly decision to do it, but also make a decision and a promise to God that if and when you are put in a situation such as that again, you will look at the circumstance as a trial, as a test, and ask God for his help during it. God's people are patient, they are considerate, they are kind, and they are loving. Remember, when a person's actions beg you to respond to them in an ungodly matter, that is the time when you need to respond to them in a matter in which God would be pleasing. You guys, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all this woman, Deborah Pagoos Smith is amazing. This day, 19 of the rude tongue has slapped me in my face. I don't normally operate with a rude tongue. I'm very, very, very in tune with the things that I say to people. I do not, for instance, 
there was a lady um, on YouTube, because you know, I, I'm a YouTuber, I support people. And there was a lady on YouTube who had made a comment um, about uh, why one other YouTuber may have um, lost her job. And she was um, saying that maybe uh, the people let her go because they thought that she was going to move, okay? That she was going to leave the area. So instead of waiting until, she, it, it's, a, it's more to the story. Um, the YouTuber was on the phone um, talking to a realtor. Someone was eavesdropping and heard that she was buying a house, asked a couple of questions, um, being nosy as to what you know she had going on. And when that particular YouTuber told her she doesn't bring her personal information to work, she went home and her assignment with the temp agency was actually um, canceled. But what we know and think, what we know and believe is that the woman that was asked the questions had eavesdropped and wanted to just be nosy. And when she couldn't get be nosy and get all the information that she wanted, she was offended. So as a result of her being offended, she ended up ending her assignment. But it's okay because that sister is going to be blessed with a job that God has intentionally for her. So anyway, to make a long story short, the, the lady came, who was a YouTuber as well, came on and she said, well, maybe they thought that you were going to move. Do you think that they thought that you were going to move? And I was like, um... What does that matter? But you know what? Instead, I didn't, I said, what does that matter in my head? But my response was, could be, could be not. Yep, the color purple line. Could be, could be not. I said, but either way, people need to really, really think about the first three words of assuming. Because you know what? When we assume, we put ourselves in the description of being buttholes. We really, really do. Assumptions are never necessary. If you don't know something, don't assume. But anyway, what I did when I said that to her, I looked at it and I said, you know, maybe I shouldn't put that there. I knew what my intentions were. My intentions wasn't to attack her personally. And that's what I wrote. I said, you know, I'm not attacking you personally. I'm just saying that people shouldn't assume. Y'all, um, I went to her page and I was supporting her as far as viewing love. Y'all call it viewing love. If I come to your page, I look at your videos, I comment on your videos, I like your videos. In my opinion, that's called viewing love because I'm supporting you. Y'all support me too with viewing love. I got a lot of um, a lot of folks that um, support me with viewing love. And I just thank y'all. I just thank y'all. Y'all, I am tickle pink about how many subscribers that I got within the last couple of days. Oh, I'm tickle pink. But anyway, with that story, um, I felt really, really bad. Um, even after I had, you know, I wanted to delete my comment. Um, but I left it because I talked to my husband and my husband said, no, 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 no. It's not offensive. You said to her, you know, that you weren't being offensive. So I went to her page. And when I went to her page and I read, um, I read that she had lost her cousin. You guys. Oh, my God. The grief I had for her um, was horrible. The, the compassion that I had for her was horrible. I was like, oh my God. And I said that to her. I'm telling you, you guys, I'm the type of person. I don't practice hurting people's feelings. I do, I do unto others that I would have them do unto me. I don't like people to be confrontational. I don't like people to talk about me. Therefore, I'm not going to talk about you. I'm not confrontational. Don't come confront me. I want you to treat me the way that I treat you. So I just prayed um, when I went to bed last night. I prayed for that young lady and her family because I didn't want her having lost her cousin who she was raised with. Um, I didn't want anything that I said to be extra pain on her. We have to be careful um, with our words. We really, really do have to be careful with our words. And I'm very grateful to God that God keeps my eyes, my ears, and my heart open for the things that I do and say to others because conviction is a beautiful thing. Conviction will keep you on the road to heaven. Remember how when we first started out in this day 19 of the rude tongue, 
It said everybody ain't going on that holy road. Everybody not going to heaven. Everybody is not going to be on that road. If you're walking around being rude, indifferent to people, always making people feel uncomfortable, always hurting people's feelings, you're not going on that road. You're not going to meet it. anybody on that holy road. You're just not going to do it. God loves everybody, but he is not going to loud allow people who don't care about other people because you know what there's a scripture in the bible that says how is it that you can say that you love me god but you don't love your brethren or you don't love your neighbor your brethren are the people that you attend church with your brethren um could be your siblings your brethren could be your neighbors in the neighborhood that you live in you have to love the people that you are around. And if you don't love the people that you are around, you can't say that you love God. Now, loving somebody does not mean that you're going to be sipping tea and eating crumpets. It does not mean that. There are a lot of people, a lot of people that I know, um, they're not necessarily my favorite people. They're not because our personalities really just don't click. I mean, one thing about me is I really don't like to be in the company of negative people. I don't like to be in the company of negative or rude people at all. If I see them on lives, I, ooh, it just cringes. I mean, I was on a live this morning. There was a young lady. She was so negative. She was so negative and everything she said was centered around her. I was like, Lord Jesus, this woman right here, help her to understand that negativity does nothing but breed negative. If you want people to be kind and loving toward to you, if you want people to speak kind and loving words of consideration towards you, you have to definitely, most definitely do it to them. And don't practice that rude and nasty time. That lady on that live just kept going at people. It was, it was terrible. So terrible that I was like, oh my God, she's going to be here all the time. I don't know if I'm going to be able to go on this live because I just don't like negative. I just don't. Negative breeds negative. All right, you guys, that has been it for our day 19 of the um, Rue Tongue. So we're going to go over day 18. And uh, day 18 was my glasses, y'all. I can't remember. You, you guys you know what? Um, I'll remember it when I see it. Um, the thing about it is not only am I doing this study, um, uh, 30 Days to Taming the Tongue, not only am I doing this, but I'm also in school and taking finals this week. So it's kind of hard to remember everything. I do remember that it was the intimidating tongue. And this is how, um, okay, once I see it, I can remember it. The intimidating tongue. And this is when Goliath, um, thought that his um, that it was going to be really easy to kill David because David was a inexperienced, unexperienced warrior. But David came up to him and said, "I'll smite you and I'll do this and that to you," and he did it. He did it. Um, intimidating tongues never work. You cannot intimidate people with name calling. It's not necessary to use threatening language, um, name calling and minimizing people for who they are. Um, these type of tactics and um, ways are that of effective uh, intimidators. But the thing that we have to do is let intimidators know we're not standing for it. You can always stand up for yourself and stand your ground firmly by not being rude. Um, do not succumb to the threats of an intimidating tongue. A lot of times what happens with people who intimidate is as children or even in their adult life, someone intimidated or is intimidating them. Intimidators often be, can become belligerent. They can become um, nasty, especially when they're trying to introduce something to you or they're trying to negotiate terms or whatever with you. And when they see that you're not leaning to their side, they get kind of worked up. Don't allow it to happen. Stand your ground. 
If they want to rant and scream like babies, allow them to do that. But politely tell them, I'm not going to let your intimidating nature intimidate me. I'm just not going to do it. You have to stand your ground. You have to stand your ground. People will continue to test your patience. They will continue to try to put you in uh, uncomfortable situations. Um, intimidators are none other than bullies. Don't let people bully you with their words. It's just like me. I'm a kind person. Been told that my entire life. But I'm going to tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to let somebody continue to intimidate me. I'm going to kindly tell you that I'm not going to let you have it. I'm not going to let you um, uh, physically, verbally, or mentally intimidate me. Because you know what it can do? It can cause severe physical and emotional scars. It can cause people to have depression. It can cause people to have anxiety. The intimidating tongue is ick. It's it's it. It's, it's, it's horrible. And what happens is people can suffer with headaches. They can suffer with anxiety, nervousness, insomnia. They can't even sleep at night. All kinds of things. Low self-esteem as a result of the intimidating tongue. Intimidators need to realize that their communication in their intimidating nature does nothing, nothing but cause people to be resentful, and to want to have rebellion towards you. So that's been it for day 19 of the rude tongue, as well as an overcap, excuse me, of day 18 of the intimidating tongue. Please, 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 especially to our spouses and especially to our children and just to everybody, speak words that are loving and kind and sweet as a honeycomb. Our children mirror and mock all the things that we say, all the things that we do. I don't have little children, you know, but when I did, there were things that I wouldn't do and say around my children. I mean, you guys know what? I never, when my kids were younger, never used to um, curse at them because I never want, how, how are you going to curse your children out? Okay, use foul language to your children. But then when you find out that they're using it at school, you're going to spank them. So it's one of those types of situations where you do as I say and not as I do. We can't operate like that because that is completely operating in insanity. Well, that's been it for 30 days of taming our tongue. You guys, these tongues are getting worked. They're getting worked. And it gives you something really, really to think about. Be kind and loving. Thank you so much. Please make sure that you share this out share out the video. I will be coming back with a lot of content. Um, as is always my desire to bring good content, I am gaining subscribers like crazy. One thing that I told somebody earlier, and I'm just going to tell you guys, if you are content creators, don't worry about the one or two people that you lose. Don't. Because when you lose one or two, you'll always gain five. I actually lost um, two people um, last week. And then I gained five, five, I gained seven this week. And the thing about it is this, um, when you lose the people, nobody wants dead weight on their page. You know, the crazy thing about it is this, if you subscribe to someone's channel, you don't have to click the bell. Um, but I just don't understand why you would subscribe and then unfollow now. I will tell you that the only people that I unfollow and I unsubscribe is folks that be doing unrulies. What do I mean when I say unrulies? If you're getting on here and you cursing and 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 acting a donkey and and doing stuff that I don't particularly um, want to see, I'm not going to have that coming on my timeline, um, coming on my thing all the time. Now I may not unsubscribe from you. But I will, um, I won't click the bell. Prime example, living with the webs. When I first got on YouTube, I liked her. I loved her children. I actually did a video on her. But you guys know what? There was so much untruth. There were so many lies. It was up and down, up and down one minute after the next. People are using her channel as a platform to build up theirs. I don't even desire to do that. I don't watch her stuff. I don't comment on her stuff. If she want to be that kind of inconsistent, crazy person, then so be it. But I'm not going to do it. 
um, don't subscribe to people and then unsubscribe just because um, they put too many too many videos out. Just don't click the bell. Um, my thing is this: I serve a mighty God, and um, He's going to make me uh, get subscribers, um, the ones that He wants me to have, whether people um, unsubscribe to me or not. Um, I enjoy what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. Um, and I enjoy meeting really, really kind people. So let's see what our daily show, who our daily shout out is going to be today. I'm going to start doing that too. Effective right tonight. I'm going to start doing a shout out. I always shout out people. I'm not so high and mighty that I only want to talk about Carol's daily sauce. You guys go over to Miss True Redbone. She is, um, She's a pretty lady, and um, she has some really good content, a very beautiful family. So that's our shout out for tonight, Miss True Redbone. God bless you all. Thank you so much for tuning in to Carol's Daily Sauce. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell to be reminded of my videos if you enjoy content. Um, thank you so much. Talk to you all real soon. Bye-bye.